is the truth. Some of you, the devil is waiting to sit you like wheat. I have not come to threaten you, but this is a reality. If the only thing you built here was a name and a title, and not faith in God, you will be seated like wheat. Because here you are surrounded by every spiritual program possible. Outside there, you need to be surrounded by a cloud of witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, getting a local church wherever you can go, wherever you can continue serving God, wherever you can continue walking uh, in accordance with the precepts and the principles of God, it is not as easy as we think. By the way, I remember two months before we left here, my brother and I were praying for one thing. God, when you take us out there, take us to the churches where you, you will, you are directing us there. Because many are in the churches. And some, we don't go to churches because they have good music. We don't go to churches because the pastor is well known in the town. We don't go to churches because they are the best praise and worship. But we go to churches because the Spirit of God has led him there. It was Jesus, the Bible said, and the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. So if your intention to be in a local church anywhere is just, you know, uh, you're going uh, by sight, you will be tortured by the devil. Praise the name of the living God. But if you are driven by the Spirit of God, you will excel. Some of you understand you are in local churches whereby uh, within the home vicinity. And it's well, it's okay. But let me tell you, some of you, God will disperse you by the virtue of jobs and by the virtue of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> If not a job, you will be relocated by marriage. And this all accords ways he uses so that to advance authentic and sound doctrine. It's not about you. It's not about us. It's about him advancing sound doctrine. For the four years, the elders who you've been here, for the five years or six, Whatever you've been receiving here is sound, I can tell you for sure. It is sound doctrine. Out there getting sound doctrine. Hey! It's not such easy. It's not such easy. Hallelujah. <laughs> so today, no, don't just listen, but also trust God for the grace, that you obtain the grace of God. And that the Spirit of God will lead you to your place of planting. Not every local church is a fertile ground where you can grow. There are certain local churches which are rocks. There are others which are thorns. There are others where birds have already invaded the birds of the air. These are strange doctrines. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. But there are certain churches where God's grace has been invested there. Hallelujah. Wow. I love the choir churches. So, let's look what is the church. Jesus said this. Uh, this is just a simple discussion. It's a simple definition. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, where two or three are gathered, in my name, I am with them. So a church is simply a gathering or an assembly of believers. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, with the common God, or a common purpose. That is to spread or to advance the gospel of the cross 
which we call salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Gospel is divided into two. The gospel of the cross and the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the cross is, is, uh, is salvation and its entirety. Praise the name of the living God. The gospel of the kingdom has to do with uh, the way of life. There are patterns and the way of life in which a Christian should live to, uh, to excel in whatever he or she does. Hallelujah. Now, this is required by the uh, uh, called Ecclesia. The New Testament is translated as the church. And uh, it comes uh, from the word ek, E-K, meaning out from and to. And uh, another word is kaleo, meaning to call. And that's to do with a group of people called out from one place to another. It is, a, it is an assembly or a congregation. So the Ecclesia in the New Testament is a group of people who have been called out of the world and to God. Now, this now becomes the church. So simply the church means this are uh, an assembly or a gathering of men, of people called out of the world, out of darkness, into the kingdom of God or into the kingdom of light of his dear son. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So, and the common mandate of the church should be to preach the gospel, to advance the gospel. Praise the name of the living God. Now, for a local church, it simply is a gathering of believers who consistently meet together at a particular geographical location. It could be uh, in a common place. It could be, uh, the place of gathering could be under a structure like uh, where we are right now, or under a tree, or under a tent. Praise the name of the living God. Where believers meet to fellowship and worship. It could also be maybe in homes, because uh, the early church wasn't just meeting in the Jerusalem temple. But they also met in homes, fellowships. And that's how they grew. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So local churches are very key and are very important in advancing the cause of the kingdom. Local churches have been now mandated to hammer the gospel in that locality until Christ is experienced through every strata of human influence in that place. Praise the name of the living God. So it is like the governing gate. You remember Jacob? He slept somewhere. And then he saw the ladder. And then he said, this is what? Hallelujah. So he didn't know that this place was indeed the gate or the door to heaven. But of course where he slept, he slept where Abraham had already done some sacrifices. So the altar there, there was a continual fellowship in there because the altar had been raised in that place. Hallelujah. And it was not by coincidence. It had been ordained by God that you will be there. Praise the name of the living God. So local church are good. They are very good. And we shall see reasons as to why they are good. One of them, uh, uh, another mandate of the local church is to, is to affect the spiritual realm of that particular place at any given moment, at any given time. That's what Paul tells Timothy do not for neglect or do not forget the public preaching of the word. Praise the name of the living God. He informs him to continue with what we now call open air meetings. Those open air meetings 
are very important and very key. Because they affect the spiritual realm of that place. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. And there are many other reasons why we need local churches. Because it is there that we are planted and it is there that we grow into maturity in every facet of life. Both spiritually, in every other areas. Praise the name of the living God. Local churches are places where God has ordained his mouthpieces. These are shepherds. Men and women of God who have been ordained by God and been, uh, 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 to speak into life of men. Praise the name of the living God. For it is written, he gave gifts to men for men. So a shepherd is a gift from God to men. That's what John told his disciples when they came uh, telling him, you know, the man you spoke about is now baptizing the other side of the of River Jordan. And then John told, told his disciples that nobody can receive a thing except it is from God. So the gift we have, we can only disperse them in a local church. That's why we need local churches. Praise the name of the living God. So that to help you grow spiritually. So that to help you and lift you to the next level. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you look at the church and what God says about the church, there are so many things that God speaks about the church. Amen. Amen. And let me give you one secret of marriage. Just one. In as much as God makes you the head, you are also the foundation. So the lady of Papa catch. <laughs> you will understand it one day. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. At 23. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all the things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Christ is who? Is the head of the church. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. These are just elements of what a church should look like. Number one, it should be built on the foundation of Christ Jesus. Number two, Christ should be the head. Not every church is where Christ is the head. There are certain churches. What did Jesus say? In one of the churches in the book of Revelation, he said, I know there are some who are what? There, there, there are um, a synagogue of what? A synagogue of Satan. So not every church. Now let, let me now be specific. Not every local church is the church of God. There are others, there are synagogues of Satan. There are others, there are, there are churches of men who have built those structures there. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So we see the Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. It's a long, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long quote. And, uh, I think we'll look uh, 15 and 16. But speak the truth in love, may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body in unto the edifying of itself in love. First Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 14. For as the body is one. I'm just mentioning the scripture because and then we can we will continue. And have many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are all baptized into one body. Where we are, whether we be Jewish or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So this defines, these are just 
are definitions of what the church is or what the church should look like and what God speaks about it. Praise the name of the living God. Another thing that God uh, uh, mentions about the church is that the church is the, is the institution that is called out, is the body that has been called out. These are people that have been called out. Praise the name of the living God. First Peter 2 uh, from verse 9. This is a common verse that all of us know. But here are a what? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That he should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the church has been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of who? Of God. Praise the name of the living God. There are certain local churches that are still operating in darkness. Not all of them are in light. Praise the name of the living God. But that's me to God because I know that uh, majority of you here, you are on fire for Jesus. That when you meet there, your candle will not burn out. And you will continue lighting. And people will know the truth. And the truth will set them free. It has been my prayer that when you leave this place, especially the elders, that you will, you will cause impact in those churches in the name of Jesus. Amen. That men will come to the light of the truth. Men will understand the entire counsel of the word of God. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Because many don't preach father's gospel. Many have doctrine issues. They don't preach the word. Some have, uh, have, have decided to single out one particular message. That is the message year in, year out. Year in, year out. So, people out the majority of the churches, people out there, they are so malnourished spiritually. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. These things happen out there. So let me ask you, if you're not praying and fasting, what will happen to you? <laughs> Think about it. Hallelujah. Let's continue. <laughs> we in the past were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Which had, you have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Praise the name of the living God. The church is also, according to God, the church is a gathering. The church is a gathering. That is one thing that God uh, 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 speaks about the body. Because when we speak about the body, we don't speak about one member, but we speak about the entire members. Hallelujah. That make up the body. So, uh, in Psalms 50 verse 5, the Bible says, Gather my saints together unto me. Psalms 50 verse 5, Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my saints unto me. This is a gathering. A church is a gathering. Those who have not, others who have made a covenant with me by what? By sacrifice. So a church is a gathering of people who have uh, gathered one because of God. They have made a covenant with God by what? By sacrifice. What sacrifice are we speaking about? We are speaking about the sacrifice at Calvary. No any other sacrifice. But the sacrifice at where? At Calvary. By the way, I come to realize this thing, and uh, it's a, it's a, it has been a teaching that has been uh, that has really spread, uh, especially in most local churches. When you go through issues of life, uh, and you go to the man of God, and I ni, in a we do any. In a we do any. From today, don't raise any other one. That one that can't be so powerful. There is no sacrifice you can ever give more than the sacrifice at Calvary. There is no blood that is so precious than that blood at Calvary. There is no altar that can veto or fight the altar at Calvary. No altar. Maybe your family altar or whatever altars. Begin trusting God and then God, God the altar of Calvary, that is my altar. And it will fight for you. I, when I came to realize this thing, hi, I stopped struggling with certain things in life. When I come to God, 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 I come
Now you want to go to your room and you want to get some food. Hallelujah. So, let me ask you. Come on, Pesa. How does I think of it? Praise the name of the living God. Let me tell you, these are the things you're going to witness out here. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So, we are called out of what? Of darkness into the light. God has done what? He is saying that the church is a gathering of his people. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 24. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the, in the midst. There I am there. I am the midst of them. It's a gathering of people. A gathering of brethren. And which means there are certain gatherings if it is not in the name of the Lord. That gathering is not a church. It's not a church at all. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if it is Brother Peter and Brother Paul who have met together. And it is not the mandate of Christ that advances. That is not a church. That's a circle. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. You are the child. You are the child. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke and love to good works, not forsaking the, assembly, uh, the assembling of ourselves together. Sakatai. As the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much the more as he sees the day approaching, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Why do we assemble together? Let me tell you. The reason why we assemble together is not just because we want to worship and to fellowship and to do that, no. But there is power that is generated in a corporate fellowship that any single individual can not. Hallelujah. There is, a, there is power that is generated in a corporate fellowship. There are certain things that God can do in a corporate fellowship that He cannot do to an individual person. It doesn't matter even if you choose to fast for 100 days. It can't work. There are certain principles that God, He only operates them. He only fulfills those principles in our lives when we are together. It's when we unite. It's when we come together as a people. Don't you just say, do not say where one is. You say where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am also with, with them. I mean, they are in this. Praise the name of the living God. And that's the reason why we gather. That's the reason why we fellowship. That's the reason why we worship together. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And the power of the church is not built on just apostolic or uh, uh, prophetic or evangelical or pastors or the teachers of the world alone. No. The power of the church is built in the, in the, in the entirety of these five ministries. Hallelujah. So where there is a prophet, where there is an apostle, there is a, pre, a, a pastor, an evangelist and a teacher of the word, when they come together, that, now, that is where now revival comes. But as long as the church is divided, as long as you can say, I'm meeting the apostle and, the, you know, I'm going with that and I don't need a pastor, then <laughs> you'll be so short. The journey will be so tremendous for you. Praise the name of the living God. So, one of the, and I thank God in what, what God is doing currently in Kenya. God is breaking barriers of the walls of the, of the church. And that is one of the greatest things if we want to see revival in Kenya. Today, the reason why you are here, you know, this is an apostolic gathering. Let me tell you this. This, the seal, is an apostolic gathering. Why? You come from a different ministry, he comes from a different ministry. You come from a different church from your home. And there are no barriers and you fellowship together. Like you know what you can do with a local church to see rules, laws and regulations. To compare to the other gospel. To compare to the other church to see the rules. Let me tell you, some of us, it took us time and prayer to break those barriers in our local churches. Yeah. Praise the name of the living God. Because there are certain local churches whereby the man of God, because of maybe a uh, lack of understanding of what the Spirit of God is doing in this season, in this dispensation, he may not allow the varieties of the gifts of God to come into place. There are certain local churches where men of God, they are the only preachers, Sunday to Sunday. So if you are anointed and you call yourself an apostle, you enter in such, you never preach on that book. Sunday to Sunday, I become a pastor at Kawaki. I can go to a I'm telling you the truth because at the end of the day, uh, we're talking about the reality out here. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So the church is also the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ. So the church places the foundation, places the head, it is a cavalry, and also uh, the church is called out from the world into the marvelous light of God, and the church is also the bride of what? The bride of Christ. That's what we it in Ephesians chapter 5, uh, 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself to it for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the worship of water by the word. That he might present it himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it may be holy and without blemish. It is the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. In Revelation 11, uh, in Revelation 19, verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made himself ready. So it's the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Praise the name of the living God. That's why I tell you, brother, work out your salvation in fear of God and trembling. So that when that day comes, you will not say, you will not say that, Lord, Lord, in your name, I preached. Lord, Lord, in your name, I did this. And then he say, he tells you, I do not know you. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. So ways in which, let us look at ways in which uh, the local churches out there, they differ from here. This one you see, this uh, um, one, one, number one, number one, number one greatest difference is doctrine. Number one greatest difference is doctrine. Hallelujah. Some of you, you will go into congregations, local churches where
We were still on fire. But the devil told that our financial life does not amount to you. <laughs> you continue fire, preach, win souls. But this other side of life, mm -mm, mm -mm. and you know, it was through that some of brethren who are with them here, some of them entered into businesses and into jobs that does not glorify God until today. And when you look at them, they are driving cars. I'm not yet driving, but they are driving cars. But you know the kind of job he's doing. There is no God there. No God. No sign of God. But Jesus said, what does it profit a man? So the devil will ensure, even if your spiritual life is growing, he will ensure when it comes to the issue of wealth, you don't prosper. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you will prosper in every way. You will prosper in every way. You will excel in every way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When, we went, when we went out there, we continued preaching the gospel and trusting God. And by the way, God came. And when the time of God came, when that time came, hi! Hey. <laughs> 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 hey. 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 Manifestation because the time of God has done what has come, and there is nothing the devil can do about it. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Doctrine, doctrine. That area ensure that God helps you. You find a local church that has some doctrine, and in fact, if you go to a local church that does not have some doctrine, so what is the solution to this? Issue of doctrine. Number one, don't just go there and begin now bubbling things. No. Create a home with the leadership of the church. Create friendship with the leadership of the church. It may take you three months, it may take you four, it may take you six months. Praise the name of the living God. And then, for, because majority of us here are youths, the best place you can begin anchoring some doctrine is through youth fellowships. Hallelujah. How we tell you now, when you are Milala, I mean, some of these local churches, youths, they are very inactive. That the, that the married people and the elderly that are doing these things. Hallelujah. Go there and begin operating with the young people. By the time the third, the fourth man comes, the leadership will notice there is something in you. And then they will begin now giving you platforms. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Number two is programs. <laughs> the programs here they are very solid. They are very solid. Some of the local churches out there, they don't have fellowships. Midweeks fellowship akuna. Akuna kabisa. Niwewe ujiteche. Praise the name of the living God. Number three, the regulations. There are laws. People have the mass themselves into, do, into laws and rules more than being to God. Praise the name of the living God. Since you have to find a hippie, a hippie, a hippie, a hippie, I find it beginning. Praise the name of the living God. By God's grace, I, I was invited to God minister in one of our mainstream churches. And I saw that the laws and regulations that are there. I was like, Jehovah Jesus. Hey! So these guys, this is what they do every other Sunday. <laughs> so, programs, regulations, in here it is good. There are churches there, out there. Brother, we can come with one another under the sun. Not at night, under the sun. Sister, we can come with one another under what? We can come with one another under what? We can come with and then there are women, there are always women there. They are the scanners. Uh, I'm telling you this is because you will encounter them. You will see them. You know, out here, in here you can interact with the brother and the sister and you know, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Out there there is restrictions and many other things. 
Psalms 37 verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by God and delighted in his ways. Romans 8 14. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. So, and you want to trust God to lead you to a local church where you be. Pray to God and ask God to lead you. Because that local church, number one, might uh, let me say almost 70% of you. There is a there is a there is a possibility that 70% of you elders who are here right now, you will marry from those local churches. Or be married in those local churches. Come on, just can't happen. to a local church and marry there where the doctrine is wrong. You can see the kind of mess you do to your kids, to your children. That's why it is very, it is very important for you to know this. Not every local church you can just enter. Praise the name of the living God. That's why he says you must be led by who? By the Spirit of God. So don't go to a church because it has good sound system, it has great praise and worship, it is well known, it is big. No, don't be motivated by, by the modern things that you can see. Be motivated by the Spirit of God and be led by the Spirit of God. I remember there was this local church that God led me there. When I arrived in that local church, what happened was, I realized they don't have, uh, uh, they don't have Sunday school teachers. Me, what about your kids? I began interacting with kids. Nikapua Sunday school teacher. Hallelujah. And I thank God because God somehow he diversified my kids. Praise the name of the living God. There's a place I was, uh, I was a youth leader. I led youth. When I came here, I realized there is a car. I began leading kids. Wanakudu wanakudukia, wanakanyakwa. Humility in a Tengenezo of the poor. <laughs> if you don't have a big hand, by the way, you can't do that work. In fact, my wife told me, I mean, like, are you, are you serious? You're managing these kids. Come on, be a thank God. Our kids will be well managed. <laughs> God is training me. Hallelujah. And God trained me in a special way. And I began learning humility. In another, in another level. And patience. Because you have to be so patient to tell this kid, you know, this and this and this and this. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you will go there and go to diversify your ministry in a very the, a dynamical ways. Praise the name of the living God. Praise Jesus. So, it is something that is happening out there. So, uh, how can you be accommodated in a local church? That you find out there. So, number one, allow God to lead you. When you, when God has led you to a certain church, I'm about to close. Uh, learn the ways of that local church first. You have to learn the ways of that local church. How we get to Nakwanza? Just learn the ways of that local church. That's what I told you. Some of you, you think that you remain in that town of you as where you are. You've been, you've been, you've been brought up. But you'll be so surprised that marriage will shift you. Especially ladies, one answer says you were. Eh, muko wape na yema. Marriage ita kushifu. Ita kutoa Central Kenya, ikupeleke Western Kenya. Ikutoa Nyanza, ikupeleke Kosa. Ama kupate ni kasi. Ime kutoa, ime kutoa wapi, chukukani, ime kupeleke wapi, Nairobi. And majority of you, almost 50%. Daishia Nairobi. Na Nairobi. Hako diyo kuna savage churches. Savage, I'm, I'm using the word savage. Churches. Pastors who are wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Tasikia pastor kisema kuna anka chifapa. Nime yombea siku yote. Na inatoka kwa shirike la moja. Kumbe the pastor want to drive and drove. Alaba na kwabia tapaulo. Uproms na anka chifu tulo kwa mwili wake. Hallelujah. So, learn the ways of that local church, get to understand the mode of operation. 
Number three, don't be carried away with the ministry titles. I know for me, I know here you're called apostle, you're called pastor, you're called all these names, mom, dad. When you talk in your get, talk in get your we don't have any link here without his own name, mom, dad. Kindly, his own genus is here, you can get up. As you go, hallelujah. I'll tell you the reason why. Because of that tendency, you are used, it's kind of, you get used to these names and all these titles, and when you come to a local church, you realize uh, they are better people than you. So you get intimidated. Or you get that local church. You are the best of the best. And then the, the sin of Lucifer enters your pride. So there is that danger. Praise the name of the living God. So when you go to a local church and God tells you, this is the local church where you will be serving. Humble yourself. Tell your neighbor, humble yourself. Humble yourself. It is first Peter 5 6 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due. In due time, praise the name of the living God. Another thing that you should understand, you should do what? You should be aware of the first bonds of that local church. There are first bonds in every local church. You are not the first one in that church. You will go there and find there are people already there. There are still you who are there already serving. Hallelujah. Quantum cook or anointed, every man of God I will notice. Now let us talk about the from today. So if you don't build, let me tell you, that's what I told you. If you are you are you are you are being yours to build a title or just for them and not your faith in God, you will be so shocked out there. Because this is the season and the time when majority of us here, the winds and the storm will come over our lives. Praise the name of the living God. But blessed be to the Lord because. The house will not fall. Why? Because we are founded on, on the rock. Hallelujah. Amen. By faith in Christ Jesus. So be aware of the first bonds of that local church. These are people who have been there for a while. Maybe probably they built that church and that structure and all that. So they feel entitled. So when you come in and you are anointed and it's like you are taking over, you know, in this kingdom, uh, the grace of, of uh, the spirit, uh, you know, there's that place of your overtaking, yeah? And it is allowed in the kingdom. Praise the name of the living God. So be humble yourself when you arrive in such like places. Learn their system. Learn how they operate. And then come in slowly. Don't just jump. Hallelujah. What else has it feel? Serve with the motive to glorify God, not to be known. Serve with the motive to know, to glorify God, not to be known. After Leo, eh? Hallelujah. Serve the motive of glorifying God and not to By the way, let me tell you, since the year began, this is my first Sunday to preach. Since the year began. Does it mean that I'm not anointed? No. Does it mean that I'm not? No. But I don't, I swear to it myself, I will never call a man of God. I will ne- my phone has almost 60% of contact, they are pastors. I swear to myself, I'll never call to ask for a cookie to be Why? Because one man of God told me, if a man of God calls you to that minister, you know what? It is God calling you to But if you, if you seek pulpits by yourself, God is not with you. <laughs> and I said, God help me. Hallelujah. And that brings me to the next point. Never request to be given good bits to minister. Let them give you the platform. Hallelujah. Hey, Pasipo, and you're going to reveal. You're going to reveal. You're going to get revelation for what you have. You know, and Pasipo, and for the last three months, you can be able to preach. You can keep your tongue in your mouth. You can keep your tongue in your mouth. I don't need to download it. You can get your children of the spirit of God and don't move. It's all right. You will move. But let me tell you, when you continue that way, and I've seen many, most of our young, young ministers in Yoruba now, there was this sister one time, she was very close to me. 
And then one brother told me, I'm cast this sister with the operation of a ministry. Uh, I, I just tell you, please, dissociate with her. And I was like, but she's a good sister, she's blessed, she's anointed, and she's doing ministry. Through her, I'm going to weekend challenges and all that. And then she, the, 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 the brothers laughed. I didn't know he was dismissing wisdom to me at then. Praise the name of the living God. I can hear this sister, she's doing ministry because of money. You, you are doing ministry not because of money. There's, these are two different people. And then one day, I came and asked the sister, hey, there is a school I've been invited to go. Do you know what she told me? I can hear so, now go.